Hey guys, thanks for your time today. I want to take a couple minutes to do a review on a new Tudor GMT I just picked up. So this one specifically is a bracelet version. So this watch comes in three different uh, kind of bracelet options. You have a NATO, you have a leather, and then you have the rivet bracelet. So history about this watch, still super, super hot watch. Initially this came out at Basel World 2018 as a brand new offering in the Tudor line. So if we went ahead and just opened this up, let's take a, take a quick look at it. All pretty standard stuff. Let me go and move all this aside. Here we go. And there we have it. So standard in the box, you get the watch obviously, you get a warranty card, booklets, and underneath there is some extra links. You have hang tag, all that type of good stuff. Pretty standard for any watch in general, but also for Tudor. So we move that aside. Let's get to, oops, a little loud there. Let's get to the watch. So this specifically is the reference number 79830RB. And this one specifically is the one that comes with the, the rivet bracelet. MSRP on this watch is 3,950 US dollars with the NATO version, the leather version coming in a little bit lower. Uh, you know, first impressions of this watch is it is quite good. You know, when you look at the value proposition of this watch compared to other things in the market, at that $3,950 price point, it is pretty hard to get something at, uh, you know, in, in this kind of price range relative to what you get in return. So specifics about this watch, we have a dome sapphire crystal, Solid display or solid non-display back case. This watch has a brand new movement coming from Tudor, which is the MT5652, which is a cost certified movement and is also an in-house GMT. Uh, 24, or sorry, 48 clicks of the bezel, which is bi-directional. Uh, this thing has also been lovely named the Diet Pepsi uh, due to its older brother in the kind of Rolex family, which is the, the, the Pepsi GMT, obviously. The color is a little bit different. So the red is actually pretty close uh, from what you know, I can tell comparing it to, to, the, uh, to the current GMT, but the blue is very, very different. If you notice kind of on this camera, it's almost kind of like this muted blue, which actually looks quite fantastic and works. Uh, snowflake hands, smaller indices. So this isn't a maxi type indice that you currently see in the, the Rolex line. 15 millimeters uh, of case thickness, 41 millimeters in total size from, uh, from the edge edge of the case, 22 millimeter lugs. I'd say one criticism about that is actually the 22 millimeter lugs. I wish it was 20. Uh, just more of a classic uh, look relative to 22. And I think the bracelet's a little bit large, but it does taper very, very well. Rivet style bracelets. So these obviously aren't real rivets. This is just a kind of a fox rivet look, which has that, that very, very vintagey feel. Um, but yeah, on the wrist. So if I go ahead and take off and put this on, let me put the, let me turn, take my, my watch off for you guys. But, Put that hook aside. So I have a seven inch wrist, but if I put this watch on, looks great. Now the early runs of, this, of these watches had some date wheel issues, but this one specific, specifically has been very, very good during its lifespan after I've gotten it. So if I go ahead and take this off, bracelet is quite good. So. If I had to say one knock on this watch is, you know, the bracelet on here compared to what I have on my my Submariner, you know, really isn't uh, kind of 100% up to the Submariner, but, you know, at the 3950 US dollar price point, this is very, very good. So functionality of the watch, how do you set it? How do you operate it? So unwind it. When it pops out, this just winds the watch. And when you do wind, it's very, very kind of frictionless, right? I'd say the winding is very, very smooth on this watch. It's great, no, no big complaints. 70 hour power reserve. And I mean, it's just buttery smooth, no issues. Now, for those who have played with a Rolex GMT and or if you own one, the actual functionality of setting this watch is the exact same. So pull out to the first position you have the ability to move forward the local time hand. 
And when it flips over, it's a very, very satisfying click. Now, the one interesting about this thing about this watch is when you go backwards, it actually flips backwards, which the current Rolex GMT does not have. So that's actually pretty interesting. So, you know, part of the, the kind of shtick there is, let's say you're on the 15th and you want to get to the 13th. Well, in the Rolex, you got to go all the way around. So this is actually a great feature. So let's say you, know, you set your local time, which let's go and say is 530. And then pulling out the second position, and this is all the same with the Rolex also, is now I can move the GMT hand all the way around to whichever time you want to set it at. So with that in mind, you know, very, very similar functionality for actual time setting. Now, the thing I will say about this watch is if I had to say a couple negatives outside of the lug width being 22 millimeters, is I wish the indices were a little bit larger. I think on this dial, it works because the, you know, the snowflake hands, it proportions very, very well. But I actually prefer the way, you know, the maxi dial on these current Rolexes look. I just think it fills out the dial a bit better. Uh, it flows a little bit cleaner. You know, for me, the little small indices is much more of a, a vintage look if you're into that sort of thing. But for me, the dial is, uh, you know, there's a lot of black showing on the dial. So I wish they were a little bit larger. But other than that, you know, no real complaints. I mean, at this price point, I really don't see how you can go wrong. Um, but it is a beautiful watch. So let me go ahead and put this back on for you guys. There you go. Cool. Thanks, everyone.